know what, my brothers, I want to share something with you. Wallahi, this is very deep, so please give me your hearts. One of the scholars, he's speaking and he's mentioning something that I found extremely interesting. And he poses this, so think with me. He says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king, the malik, the creator of the seven heavens and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala claims that he is the greatest. Yes or no? Of course, subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is. And he claims to be the most forgiving, the most loving, the most just. Yes or no? Of course, subhanahu wa ta'ala claims and we've accepted those claims and we believe those claims. So now the scholar is asking, and please look how deep this is. So now the scholar says, well, okay, fine. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the king, the most loving, the most forgiving, the most compassionate, the most just, why does Allah, when a kafir, when a disbeliever, when a non-Muslim, whatever you like, when a kafir who denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why does Allah cast this person into hellfire for eternity? Really, if we're going to think with logic and reason, the man disbelieved in you, O oh Allah, for 60 years. Let's say he died at 60. Did Allah throw him in hellfire for 60 years? Fine. The punishment, you know, his crime was so great. Double his punishment. Give him 120. But why are you casting him into hellfire for eternity? It's interesting, isn't it? And the opposite is true. Ya Allah, this person was a believer for 50, 60 years. He prayed, he worshipped you for 50, 60 years. Fine. Reward him with Jannah for 50, 60 years. Double it. Give him 100 years of Jannah for his 50 years of living and, you know, and ibadah. But oh Allah, why are you giving him eternal Jannah? So the scholar makes an interesting point. And wallahi, for those who have hearts will understand that these words are very, very heavy. He says, because when Allah took the life of the kafir, He took it at such a moment in his life that had this person lived for eternity, he was going to always live on kufr. And when Allah took the life of the believer, He took his life at such a point in time that had this Muslim lived for eternity, he was going to always live with Iman in his heart. That's why Allah gives him eternal Jannah. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal gave this person eternal punishment in hellfire. So my question to you today is, if you and I die today, which is a very real reality, regardless of what your heart tells you, if you and I die today without Salah, what does this say in the books of Allah? You know what that says, my brother? That has you lived for eternity, you were never going to pray. And that if you died without Quran in your life, if you and I died today without Quran in my life, you know what that means? It means you were never going to read Quran. So don't kid yourself. And wallahi, my brothers, again, we need to come back. How am I living my life? Where am I going with my life? And how will I live? And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes my soul, in what condition will it be in? What condition will it be in? Really, is it a soul that Allah is pleased with? Is it a soul that the angels are pleased with? Or am I going to be a soul that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is displeased with? Ask yourself these things, my brothers. Wallahi. And honestly, for your sake, for your deen, for your iman, wallahi, I beg you. You know what? I don't. I challenge you. How's this? I challenge you to go to the cemetery and just walk. Walk and read these tombstones. Walk and read their ages. Walk and read their dates. What has made us believe? What has convinced? What has fooled us, my brothers, that we're going to live for a long time? Wallahi, my brothers, this life is very real. 
more real than you will ever know. And you won't understand how real this life is. Wallahi, until you die, only then will you come to understand woe. Woe to me.